Hey guys, welcome back to another math lesson with Hey Care Math and Science. In this video, we'll be learning about bearings, and by the end of the lesson, we should all be able to understand how bearings are measured and written, be able to use compass directions to draw diagrams, and finally, be able to use trigonometry to solve problems involving bearings. So let's pause the video here and take a minute to write these down in our exercise books. Alright, so to start the lesson off, let's start with what bearings are. So bearings are used to indicate direction and is therefore commonly used to navigate the sea or air in ships or planes. So if any of you want to be a pilot or a sailor, this is going to be pretty important to you. If, even if you don't want to be one of those, you still need this uh, for sense of direction. So bearings are used with a compass. It is very important that you know your compass, uh, compass points. So we have north up the top, east on the right, south down the bottom, and west on the left here. So the common mnemonic I use, I think a lot of people use this one, is not never eat soggy wheat bix for north, east, south and west. So it just goes around clockwise. You can make up your own or you can use my one here. And for the points in between we have northeast, southeast, southwest and northwest. We always start with the one on the top and the bottom and then read the one either on the right or the left in between. Uh, seconds. So it's northeast, southeast, southwest, and northwest. And finally, the most common type of bearing is the true bearing, and it is measured clockwise from north. So most of the time, we're going to start north and measure the bearing going clockwise so around that way. This will make this will all make a bit more sense in our example problems in the next few slides. All right. So continuing from the last slide, a true bearing is an angle measured clockwise from north. So if you look at this diagram here, we have north here. And that point here, we start from north and go clockwise around and that is 120 degrees. So we would read that as 120 degrees true because we're starting from north and going around clockwise. True bearings are written using three digits. Even if it is a one digit number, we put two zeros in front of it to make it three digits. So instead of writing eight degrees T, we would always write double zero eight degrees T. Same with a two digit number, we always add the zero in front. And if it's a three digit number, you can just keep it the way it is. All right, so for this next point here, it says to describe the true bearing of an object positioned at A. So we're trying to find the position of that, that of A here from an object positioned at O. So that's our starting point, we're starting here. We need to start at O, face north, so that is that direction. Then turn clockwise through the required angle to face the object A. So that the angle required to face A is going to be this one here. And that is the angle we'll be looking for. That will be the true bearing of A from O. Notice it is from O. When solving problems with bearings, draw a diagram such as this one. The diagram will look very similar to this. And it must include the four compass directions, north, east, east, south, and west at each point. So notice it has north up the top, and we have arrows on either side indicating north, east, south, and west. All right, so let's try that with a couple of questions here. So the question asks us for the diagram shown, give the true bearing of A from O. So it's very similar to the one before, we're looking for the bearing of A from O. So we start at O, face north and go 120 degrees that way. And if you remember, if you, if you remember how to write it, we write it 120 degrees, true. That will be the bearing of A from O. Now B, it says the true bearing of O from A. So this time we're going the other way. We need to get the bearing of O from A. So we'll, I'll draw this out first. Let's, let's draw that here. That is O. And we have A down here. I'll draw another compass point here. Let's draw those arrows and make sure you also include north, east, south, and west. Once again, north, east, south, west. And we have the point A here. So the line, let's connect those two together. That will be the line we want. And we start from A. This time we're starting from A. Make sure you're facing north once again. And we go we go clockwise to form the angle here. So that's the angle that we will be after. All the way from that point here, all the way around there. 
Right, so with that information, we know this angle here is 120 degrees. So a straight line is 180, so this angle here will be 60 degrees. And because these two angles are alternate angles, that will be 60 degrees there. So now we know well now we know that's 60 degrees, that unwanted part, and a full revolution, a full circle around here, will be 360 degrees. So we do 360 minus 60, because that's the part we do not want. That will give us 300 degrees. So our bearing here will be 300 degrees tr true for the bearing of O from A. All right, now let's pause the video here and take a minute to work on these questions yourself. Just unpause whenever you're ready to go and go through the questions with me. All right, so for the one on the left, it's asking for the true bearing of A from O. So we start off at O and go to A. So this one was the easier one when facing north. Just go all the way around. And it tells us that angle here is 50 degrees. And we know that straight line is 180. So we get it by 180 plus 50, that should give you 230 degrees. So our answer will be 230 degrees true. All right, for the next one, it's asking us for the true bearing of O from A. So we're going the other way. We're starting with A and going to O. I'll just draw it out again here. That's our first one. And A, I'll make it down here. Let's connect it with the line. There we go. So I'll label that O and A. Once again, we know that is 50 degrees and we want the bearing of that here. And once again, these two are alternating angles here. So this one will also be 50 degrees. So the bearing of A from O will be 50, the bearing of O from A, sorry, will, also, will be 50 degrees true. And just remember, it's always three digits, so we need to add the zero in front there. So it'll be 050 degrees true. Give yourself a tick if you got these two to correct to correct and good on you. All right, so now we've got a worded bearing problem. Let's start off by reading through the question. It says a bushwalker walks three kilometers on a true bearing of 60 degrees from point A to point B. Find how far east, correct to one decimal pl place, point B is from point A. So we've got the diagram here. Bushwalker walks three kilometers on a true bearing. So that's that way, three kilometers, and we have 60 degree bearing here. Find how far East, corrected one decimal place, point B is from point A. So we need to draw the triangle it's talking about this time. We're going to use trigonometry with bearings here. So we have that 60 degree triangle here, and we know the hypotenuse is three kilometers. And we want to find out that length here. I'll just call that X because it's a bit easier to work with. All right, now we need to use so ka to. I hope you guys all know this really well by now. So if you look at this, we have opposite here, adjacent here, and the hypotenuse up there. So the two sides we're using here is the adjacent and hypotenuse. So we'll be using ka, which means we'll be using the sign cos. So cos 60, the angle always goes in there, equals adjacent on hypotenuse. Adjacent is x over hypotenuse, 3 kilometers. And now that gives us x equals 3 times cos 60. Now let's just put that into our calculators. I'll just get mine out. X equals 3 times cos 60. And you should get 1.5. And make sure you include the units. It's 1.5 kilometers. So X or so the person would have traveled 1.5 kilometers East. Make sure you always write your answer in words if it is a worded question. All right, now it's your turn. Pause the video here. It's going to be very similar to the one we just did before. So just pause it, have a go, and just unpause when you're ready to go through it. All right, so let's start it once again just by reading the question. It says a ship sails 10 kilometers on a true bearing of 55 degrees from point A to point B. Find how far north, correct to one decimal place, point B is from point A. So this time we want to find out how far that way the ship went. Let's draw the triangle out again. We have angle here, 55 degrees, and that. And the ship went 10 kilometers on a true bearing of 55 degrees, so that's this side here. So that is our hypotenuse, and we want that 
side down here. Once again, we're going to use Soka Toa to determine which side we need. And we have the adjacent, the hypotenuse, and opposite here. And the two we're going to use are the adjacent and hypotenuse once again. So I'll be using Ka. So let's write out the formula we're going to use. Cos 55 equals adjacent. So that is our x over hypotenuse, which is 10 kilometers. All right, so that gives us, we need to rearrange the question. So that gives us x equals 10 times cos 55. Let's put that in our calculator to get our answer. 10 times cos 55, that should give you 5.74. Round to one decimal place. I'm not sure if I did that in the question before, but make sure you're reading the question properly. That is 5.7 kilometers so in words make sure you write the answer in words the ship would have traveled 5.7 kilometers north give yourself a tick if you got that correct all right so this time it's your turn to have a go it's going to be pretty similar to the one i just did so pause the video have a go and just unpause when you're ready to go through it all right now that you're back let's read through the question again so a high car walks two kilometers on a bearing of 120 degrees from point a to point b Find how far east, correct to one decimal place, point B is from point A. So how far east, that is towards the right again. All right, so let's give that a go. Hiker walks two kilometers on a bearing of 120 degrees from point A to point B. So let's draw that triangle down. That's going to be two kilometers. How far east, that's the point, that's the side we're interested in. And that's the rest of our triangle. So what I pretty much drew here was that triangle there. So once again, we know the angle it gives us is that 120 degrees. And we know a straight line is 180 degrees. So that will be, this little angle will be 180 minus 120, which gives you 60. So angle here is 60. Our, ang our side of interest is the opposite. And we have the hypotenuse and we don't really care about the adjacent. So we're going to use so here. So that means we'll be using the sign sin. So sin 60 equals x. I'll use x this time over hypotenuse 2 kilometers. So x equals 2 times sine 60. And x will then equals equal, if you put it into the calculator, value of 1.73 and remember to one decimal place that will give you 1.7 kilometers give yourself a tick if you got that correct and let's move to the next one what is the bearing of a from b so once again like the question before we need to start from point b point b remember we start from north because it's a true bearing and go all the way around i'll just draw that out again here make sure we are showing all our working out in our books so point a here going straight down to point b that is point b there we go the angle we're given is that angle here 120 so that means this one is 60 like we calculated over here so once again that's an alternating angle so that is also 60 degrees and our angle of interest is that big one over here so if, once again, full revolution is 360 degrees. So our bearing, we know, will be 360 minus 60. That gives us 300. So our true bearing will be 300 degrees true. Give yourself a tick if you got that correct as well. All right, so that brings us to the end of this lesson. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you guys now know understand how bearings work and why they are used. And also, hopefully you guys can all understand how bearings are measured and written can use compass directions to draw diagrams and finally use trigonometry to solve problems involving bearings once again thank you for watching and i'll see you all back online